Hi, this is Carmen Alana Tibbetts, and I am joining you from the Agoja Art Studio. And I am beginning my series on plant inspired artworks for 2021. So if you recall, we have chosen 20 different species of plants that are native to the Sonoran and Chihuahuan deserts in Arizona, New Mexico, and Northern Mexico. And I'm going to be doing cloth figures, dolls, although a little bit different from the stuff that I've done in the past. Uh, dolls with different kinds of bodies that portray these plants. So my first step was to think about how I wanted to do the figures themselves. Did I want heads and arms and legs and bodies uh, like I've done with my other figures? So basically the previous works are human bodies and then an animal head. So I decided that I didn't necessarily want to do that, but I still want to do something that would enable movability and something that somebody could put on a shelf and be able to pose it as a sculpture, but not necessarily with human components. So the first step, and I will admit that I'm still kind of struggling mentally, artistically, creatively, what I'm going to do with some of these plants. So the first thing I did is I looked at all 20 and I decided to group them into categories broadly based on their growth form. And I will admit, I am starting with what I think of as the easiest things first. So I have a list over here. And so I grouped things into whether it has an upright growth form and it's mostly a foliage based plant versus something that's more bushy or something that grows on the ground as, and it's trailing. Uh, and then of course I had trees and shrubs and then the cactus, and I'm gonna do those last because for me, those seem to be the hardest to get a mental grip on. So the first thing is going to be the upright foliage things. And if you think about what you've seen with a lot of artistic depictions of plants in art as say figures, is one of the common things to do is to have the human body with arms and legs that move and all of that. And maybe if it's a flower, have the head as whatever flower that is. We've seen that a lot historically in sculpture. That sort of thing has happened a lot in animation and movies. And often what artists do is they will have this head, maybe it's the petals, and then they'll sort of put little eyes and a little mouth and have some semblance of expression there. And I decided in the beginning that I didn't want to do that. I don't want to have eyes and mouths and noses and ears because plants don't. So that is one artistic decision that I made early on. So although there, there may be something that looks kind of head-like, it's not going to be a head with recognizable, recognizable facial features. That's out. So what am I going to do? So I'm starting with things that I'm thinking of that have sort of an upright growth form. So if you think of this as the ground, it is a plant that comes out of the ground and it has foliage. So leaves, maybe flowers, it may have some branching stems, but basically it is an upright thing. So I decided for this group that I am going to have arms and legs, and I'm going to talk about pattern design in just a minute. So I'm starting with one of my basic patterns, but obviously I have to alter that pattern for everything else. So I want this group of plants to look different from something that I'm going to have as a shrub, right? Because to me, this group is all about upright and straight. So that's something to think about as an artist, as you are thinking what you want the end result to be. So here I'm trying to portray an actual species and I'm thinking about how I visualize that species and the characteristics that stick in my mind that I want the viewer to be able to see. So it may be something that somebody translates as personality or it just may be a visual aspect of color or pattern or something like that. As an artist, you are not in control of how somebody interprets or views your work in its entirety, but you can influence what it is that they're thinking about and how they interpret it. So for me, I want that upright thing. So if we're talking about something that's going to have a body, it's going to have arms and legs and a body, so a torso and all of that, and I want to portray uprightness, think about your body. So. I'm going to use my body as a sample and I will say that I have a wall of mirrors over here 
And I do this sort of exercise when I am thinking about pattern design and dolls. So port posture, excuse me, posture for the body that you're going to have is important in how the viewer interprets that figure. So if somebody is just sort of sitting relaxed or slouching or something like this, you, know, you have a particular body shape, you have a concavity, you have a roundness, and this translates into how the figure itself sits physically in space. Now, because I want to think about upright, I want a very straight, very linear body. And I also, even though plants are gonna stand up here, so this is gonna be a little strange. So, you know, you have straightness. So do I want anything that goes down? No, I don't because I'm doing upright growth. So perhaps I wanna do something that has to do with going straight up and down. I want that linearity. So then that becomes a question, how do I wanna deal with joints? Because I'm altering a traditional human body figure. So for me, my dolls, and I'll show you in just a second, my dolls have a particular way of being jointed on their torsos and on their hips. But what that means is that there is horizontal movement to those joints, and I don't want that for these guys. I want verticality. I want straight, I want linear, I want vertical, okay? So I'm gonna turn the camera off and we're gonna go uh, and we're gonna shoot something a little bit differently. I'm gonna talk about the patterns and how I changed it. So back in a minute. Let's start by taking a look at the pattern that I'm gonna use as the basis for the new plant patterns. So this is my 12 inch doll and it has an unjointed arm but joints at the shoulders. I do have a joint at the knee but I'm not gonna do that for the plants and then I have uh, very wide hips on this guy. And this particular pattern has a dart on the front and the back. And when you open up the arms, you see how horizontal that is. That's not something I want with my plants. I want more of a vertical aspect. And the same sort of thing happens when you open up the legs. And the reason for the legs especially, and that, that broadness and the dart here, is to give a very stable seat so that when the figure is sitting, it's not going to topple around because it has like a really narrow hip thing. I don't want that in this case. I don't want all of this width. I want that vertical sort of up and down thing. So the arm joint, I can actually alter quite a bit by where I put the button joints. So I'm not as concerned about altering the pattern up here. But the hip thing, that is something I do have to change. So what I did was I got my pattern pieces, and so I have them and I make them out of you know me, good old cereal box cardboard, and here is the pattern. This is the arm, and this is the uh, thigh, and then the lower leg, and you can see you have the, the different pieces, actually I'll use this one here, uh, the different pieces for the upper and lower leg, and this little divot here is so that when you close the knee, that portion of the leg, the fabric has some place to go. So I don't want to use that joint, so I want to get rid of it. And here's that dart, and I don't want to have the dart, so I want to get rid of it and maybe make this a little bit narrower. And the arm actually has a little bit of shape to it, and I'm not so concerned about that for the plants, so I'm going to simplify this. So what do I do? I start with these pieces, and I just got a piece of paper, and I put the the pattern pieces directly down on the paper and I just sort of traced around and then I thought about the changes that I needed to make. So in this case I am going to simplify the leg, I'm going to take it in a little bit and you might notice here that this is very wide and the doll itself, this is a wide hip, but it doesn't often look as wide in reality, the sewn part, as it does when you have the pattern piece and you have to realize that you're cutting out flat cloth and then you are stuffing it and you're creating curves. So the finished appendage is going to be narrower than what you have on the pattern piece. So one of the things that people do when they're starting out is they start out with the dimensions that they want to end up with. And you have to add not only seam allowances but you have to add something for that curvature. So what I wanted to do here in the arm is basically make the two sides of the arm the same. In my arms, I add hands, and I'm not going to do that. These guys are not going to have hands, and I don't need this portion open at the bottom where I add the hands. So I just close that up, 
and I'm making this rounded thing um, sort of at the end, kind of a, it looks like a stump here, but we'll deal with that for the plants. And the biggest changes were in the body itself, because what I wanted to do was have these hips come in. I want one big line. I don't want to have a line for the torso and then a separate line for the lower body. I wanted everything all in one line, so that means that the legs have to come in. Whoops, I pressed them kind of hard there. So if you're going to do that, if you're going to bring it in, you could do it by just making a super tight button joint, but that doesn't work. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take away a lot of this width, this fabric, this torso area here in that hip area. So I thought about how much less I wanted, and I wanted about a half inch at the widest part. And then I had to think about that curvature, because remember the cloth sort of goes in, and then it creates a face that is this joint, right? So if you think about the width of this torso, if we took this leg away, there's a width here, right? So this fabric is folding around from the front, folding around from the back, and creating this flat face that the hip joint sits in, right? So I want to take away just a half of inch of width, just from what you see, and then I also want to take away something of that curvature, so that's another half an inch. So if I were just going to draw a line, and you could certainly do that, you could just get a pattern and just draw that line and then use that as a pattern, but the best thing to do is to, to have a curve, and I just use a set of French curves to do that, and I figured that what I wanted to do based on these measurements here is I wanted the curvature to start a little bit below the waistline, which is what I have this red line here. So I graded it from a little bit above to down below, and then this was the final pattern piece that I came up with. And of course I didn't trace this one darker, so you can't see what's going on there. Here it is. So this is what the new torso looks like. Okay, And I did a similar sort of thing uh, with the new leg. And so it's now a one-piece leg, and you notice I still have a foot. I'm not necessarily going to keep a foot in my plant, so we'll deal with that later. Uh, and then here's the new arm piece. So these are my new pattern pieces. The first thing that I always do is try something out in muslin, and what I ended up doing was the same sort of cloth that I have here on the board, which, you know, it's not so great to look at. Let's see, let's just put this down. Another piece of cereal box cardboard. So here's our torso. Here's the arm, and I just used um, a hat pin. It's just sort of a fake joint, and it's pretty vertical as it is. I'm kind of fine with it, and like I said before, I can play with this a lot based on how much I push in the button joint. I may end up taking some of the shoulder width away, but you'll notice also that there's nothing here for a neck because I'm not doing heads. I'm doing something different, so that's another big simplification there. I just got rid of that whole piece. So the bottom is the issue of most concern. So we have our legs, and here's our leg. And one of the things you can do to test the joint is think about the figure if it was sitting. And I know this looks a little weird on the camera because this is coming vertically towards you. So this is the bottom. This would be the crotch area. I'm going to take this arm off. Okay, and so where does the leg go? Right, because people fiddle around with it like this, and then they'll put it somewhere, and it just it won't sit because it's not even on the bottom. What you do is you sit your body up, and you put a pin where the hip joint is going to be. And remember, people often put that pin way too high. You have a circle here, a circle of force that's going to go into the the hip area, into that torso piece. So you want your joint to be the center of that circle. So it goes a lot lower than most people think. Okay, so you put a pin in so it's coming out the other way. You have your torso, and then you put your leg in uh, where it's going to sit so that if your figure was sitting, all of this would be touching the bottom of the shelf or the table or whatever. Okay, So when we move the torso like this, you see that I took out too much at the top of the leg area. Okay, so for this figure to be stable sitting, there's just too much missing. Now some people would say, okay, well, you know, that looks kind of cool the way it is. I like it. It's fine. 
And then you notice it's much more narrow through the body, and we have that linear aspect that I was looking for, but I don't like this missing whatever. That looks kind of weird. So I have to go back, and I have to alter the pattern again. So here I have my drawing, and I traced the pattern. And I took some measurements, and what I need to do is add a little bit. So I'm going to lower this area for the hip joint, and basically all I did was I just got the pattern and I lowered it, right? So I brought that that curve where the, the leg is going to go, I just brought it the same one, because it seems like it works fine, you know, if you had the leg and it's fitting here, right, it seems to be fitting fine there, it's just too high. This is too high. So what I need to do is bring that in, uh, bring this whole curve down a bit, or just bring it lower. So the simplest thing to do is you just have your pattern. I measured how much I needed to bring it lower, and I simply just lowered it, and then uh, drew in the new pattern piece. So this will be my pattern, and I am going to say that this basic body and these legs are the way that I'm going to go. I'm okay with this sort of general shape and kind of a legginess. The arm is kind of weird looking. It's just kind of plain, but that's okay. Um, we're going to deal with this and alter these shapes a little bit for each particular plant. So I am going to stop here. This is going to be the pattern for the first four species that I'm doing. It's going to be the New Mexico thistle, uh, Kearney's blue star, eyelash grass, and the cliff break fern. So I will be altering and embellishing this pattern a little bit for each one of those species, but this is what I'm going with for the first four. So we'll talk about um, translating those species into these figures in the next video. See you soon. Bye-bye.